Hey, what is up, guys? Akers here, back with another video. Today, we are going to take a look at the RFM 90 series LoRa modules from Hope RF. Uh, these are the modules, these small, pretty cute modules from Hope RF. Uh, these are LoRa modules. Uh, we are going to see how can we connect these to uh, things like an Arduino, a Raspberry Pi, an ESP8266, an ESP32. We are also going to take a look at the pin diagram of these things. How can we make these work? Uh, we are going to see uh, similar products like these in the market like the RS02 from AI Thinker which features an Semtech chip. We'll talk all about that uh, in the later parts. Also, we'll be taking a look at the Reacts module which is like a competition for this module but an expensive one in comparison to this. Stay tuned to the video if you think this is interesting. Well, I do. I order components for my projects from lcsc.com. They provide all types of components you might require from analog ICs, microcontrollers, passive components and even tools like soldering stations. They provide components from over 840 manufacturers they also provide a good parametric search when you need to find components according to their features. You will find an $8 discount link in the description below. So firstly, uh, diving into the technical specifications of these modules. So all of these four versions of the RFM module provided by the Hope RF, uh, it has the same data sheet because it kind of performs the same function as a LoRa modem. And then uh, it has the same pinout for all these modules. There's some frequency differences and all that. We'll discuss that. Uh, but that's main. And there's a 120 pages long data sheet. I'll link that in the description below along with the all the parts that I show in the video. I'll link that in the description below with. So popping into the data sheet, the key product features as they mention, it's like a, a, we have a 20 dBm RF power amplifier that's the output amplifier there's no inbuilt antenna on this thing as in the antenna connector so there's a pin for an antenna uh, which you will have to extend with some proper balancing and all that stuff so firstly we'll take a look at the comparison between the modules then we'll pop into the pin out of this thing so firstly the comparison thing firstly we have the rfm 95 then we have the RFM 96, 96, I'll write that down again. And at the last but not the least, we have the RFM 97 or the 98. So they kind of perform the same functions. So they are combined in the data sheet as well. So firstly, the frequency range is the main feature that divides these three modules. The RFM 95 works on the 868 megahertz or the 915 megahertz range so that is one difference you will find then the rf96 works on the same frequency band as the 95 so it's again 868 and the 915 megahertz uh, but the rfm97 or the 98 uh, will work on the 433 megahertz or the 470 megahertz so that is the first point of difference which you see majorly there's this thing called spreading factor i have done a whole uh, big video explaining lora thing where the lora spread spectrum techniques and all that you must watch that video i'll link that up over here so that's a pretty much informative video about how lora works and all that so i'll not cover that over here the spreading factor for the rfm 95 goes from 6 to 12 and so is the case in the RFM 97 or the 98. So this also goes for a spreading factor from 6 to 12. But the RFM 96 has a lower range. So it goes from a, a spreading factor from 6 to 9. So the higher spreading factors that is the lower data rates are not available on the RFM 96. Uh, then the bandwidth is pretty much same. That is like 7.8 to 500 kilohertz. So I'll mention it like a universal thing over here. So the bandwidth is like same for all three. It's 7.8 to 500 kilohertz. 
bitrate is also same it's like equally same uh, it's on the lower range this has a little bit lower bitrate available as well but that is pretty much fine then the sensitivity the estimated uh, sensitivity for these devices as a receiver uh, ranges from minus 111 to approximately minus 148 dBm so what minus 148 is applicable for both of these but the RFM 96 has a little less so the RFM 96 will have a minus 139 dBm sensitivity now moving on to one of the main things that you need to know is the connections of this module to anything like a Pi or a Arduino or anything a microcontroller the module is based out of an SPI uh, interface so you'll have to connect the SPI bus from the uh, RFM module to your microcontroller I'll draw the basic pinout for this module keeping these modules aside so it has 8 pins on one side so in total it has a 16 pin set the pitch that is the distance between two holes is less than 2.54 millimeter so it's not the general pitch you find in any component these days so it's a little bit less it's like the ESP8266 pitch so yes it's like bang on the same it's 2 mm between the pins if I'm not wrong so it's it matches the ESP8266 over here ESP8266 also has 8 pins on one side and so does the RFM series of modules so I'll draw this basically so if this is the module diagrammatically there's this IC that is the main chip from Hope RF and then this, this crystal oscillator over here so the orientation is somewhat like this so starting from the top right we see that uh, the first pin is DIO2 then we have DIO1 DIO0 3.3 volts DIO4 DIO3 ground antenna on the left hand side starting from the top we have ground then we have MISO MOSI SCK NSS reset DIO5 and ground so out of the 16 pins you have one two three ground pins this ground pin is like exclusively for the antenna so in general RF designs you will use uh, the antenna over here and then you will take the ground directly from here so you will place a IPEX, ante IPEX connector somewhere over here with very near to the uh, module and then you will probably attach the antenna over here these are for the like you can connect it for the power supply this is the power supply that is the 3.3 volts then the major uh, major pins in the SPI we know are the MISO, MOSI, SCK, NSS and RESET so this is master in slave out master out slave in so these are the basic data pins that is data in and data out then we have clock for the SPI bus uh, then this is the chip select kind of thing and then there's the reset so these are the main pins that you always need for the SPI bus and in this case also you will need these apart from that you will see these DIO pins so there's one zero one two three four and five so there are six DIO pins uh, these are basically data input output pins which are not always necessary while you're using this RFM or any module for that matter uh, is it's like optional uh, when you're receiving you'll definitely have to use a DIO zero pin so that is very much compulsory for reception purposes for transmission you can work out with these pins only so taking a case where you have the RFM 95 module and you have an Arduino don't hit the dislike button because of my bad drawing please and there we have the RFM module so now we need to connect these so firstly we will connect the power lines of these so like this and like this we have the 3v 3.3 volt pin and the ground pin both are connected for the power only then we have the basic SPI bus so we will have all these five wires uh, going from over here to here so the MISO, MOSI and the SCK pins will go to the corresponding pins on the Arduino that is the MISO pin on the Arduino the MOSI pin on the Arduino and the SCK pin on the Arduino 
So these are the standard pins on the Arduino over here. So it starts from uh, digital pin 13 and goes down. So there's the SPI bus for the Arduino. Uh, there it is. And then you have the chip select and the reset pins, which you can change according to your software. So I'll put down the libraries in the description below. And when you're coding, you can uh, whatever pin you like, you can use on the Arduino, the Raspberry Pi, or even the SPA to do 66 according to your convenience for the chip select pin and the reset pin. Because if you have many slaves on the SPI bus, then you will have many chip select pins uh, going to the Arduino. So that is like a variable option for you. Then you have the reset pin that is also variable. Uh, sometimes you can uh, work without the reset pin also. It works fine over there. So this is the basic pinout and this was over the SPI interface. So this module. Now we'll take a closer look at the some of the competitors of the RFM module, the Reax module and the AI Thinker module that is the RS02. So let's take a closer look at these. So firstly we have the RFM modules from Hope RF. Then we have the RS02 module from AI Thinker. So there's the RA02. Uh, there's another module as well available that is the RA01. I'll pop in a picture over here. I don't have that module in hand with me. So there's this RA02 and there's this RA01. It's similar uh, to this RFM module like you have the uh, 95, 96, 97, 98. Uh, similarly, AI Thinker, the company which manufactures this and the popular ESP modules as well. So there's this AI Thinker. So AI Thinker has two models of this, uh, which is the RA01 and the RA02. The basic difference between RA01 and RA02 is that in RA02, if you notice, uh, there's this IPEX connector. So you can directly attach an antenna over here. In the RA01, it's more like this module with, with a metal casing, of course. But uh, it's like this module, you have these type of pins, which you attach to a PCB, then you can attach any antenna as you want which is not uh, in this case you get an external antenna connector as well with the pins so this breaks out the pins for the antenna as well so this is a pretty good module and the third module that we are mentioning today is the reacts module which i find is the best module for usage purpose for a prototyping hobby purpose but it is a little bit a lot expensive than these two modules it's like three times the cost of these modules so we have to take that into consideration. So the company is Reacts and the module name is RYLR896. Firstly, let's talk about the cost. So these two modules are available on LCSC and this module uh, is like for $4.2. Then the RA02 is available for uh, $3.7. And the R01 is also available for a similar price that is $3.73. So we'll take this figure. Uh, and now coming to the Reacts module, it sells like for $15, but it comes on sale or something like that. Sometimes it comes in a threefold price than these two easily, but it has its own advantages, which we'll talk about right now. So the RFM module connects to your microcontroller using an SPI bus. This the RA02 also connects using an SPI bus. So I made this uh, LoRa node using an ESP8266 and a RA02. So this is my build and I'll, I've made a video about this. So you can check that out if you are interested in that. And I've done a video on Reacts module as well. I'll link that also in the description. For now, this works on the UART. So it's like you can connect this module to any serial device. Uh, you can send an AT commands. So it works on the principle of AT commands. So you send AT commands which are uh, defined by Reacts on their data sheet. So you send an AT commands, you get AT commands uh, and all the communication occurs through that. There are no special libraries that you require to work with the Reacts module as you need with the AI Thinker module or the RFM module. So that is a big, big plus over here. It's very user friendly module. So what is what it is, is that you have a similar LoRa uh, transceiver module over here. As you see, this is the RYLR890. Then that is connected to an STM32 microcontroller over a SPI bus. And then this 
STM microcontroller breaks out its serial that is the UART bus over here so that you can talk to the LoRa module using this uh, as an interpreter or a translator you may say then you can use this module directly from a UART pen so that is why the cost of this is higher also you have the antenna inbuilt although it's a cheap as a uh, spring antenna but yeah that gets the job done you cannot use these modules without an antenna otherwise there's this risk of damaging the modules uh, these are available on all frequencies of the ism band so that is the uh, 433 megahertz range then we have the 868 megahertz and then we have the 915 megahertz the drawback about the ra02 or the ra01 is that it's only available for the 433 megahertz so you cannot uh, buy this module on the 8 or 868 or the 915 megahertz a range of the frequency band so which is a little bit bad if you're in a country or a place where these frequency is used and 433 megahertz isn't legal to use in the ism band then you can't probably use this module and the reacts module this one is the 896 module uh, which works on the uh, 800 868 or the 915 megahertz range but you can get a 433 megahertz as well so that is a flexible option from Reax. So that is a very short, simple comparison between the uh, between these three modules and how you can use it with any device that you want. With the Raspberry Pi, you'll have to define the uh, GPIO header file on the Python, and then you can easily use these modules. The so this was a short and simple video about the RFM uh, modules from Hope RF and the various types of modules that they offer then it's pin out we saw the how can you connect it to your uh, microcontroller or your projects then we saw the differentiation between these three modules and uh, yeah that is it if you want me to make some project or some thing with this rfm module so we can test ranges and all that stuff you can mention it down in the comments below and i'll consider it surely i've done projects on these two modules i'll put them down in the description below i'll put detailed uh information on this module i'll write articles about it and i'll put all of that in the description below so be sure to check the description thanks for watching subscribe to our channel if you haven't till now also hit the bell icon to stay notified this is akash signing off